21st century tools and technology, like 3D printing, 3D scanning, and 3D software, are enabling us to change the world in some small or big way, depending on what we care about and what we individually feel called to do. And I'm so excited to share that today because it's not just an idea, it's reality. We now have access to a powerful new set of tools that allow us to take what's in our hearts and our minds and make our imaginations real. And that's what I'm here to talk with you about today, how 3D printing and the rapid democratization of desktop manufacturing is empowering all of us, corporations, entrepreneurs, individuals, students, me, and you, to not just be makers of things, but to be change makers, making a positive social impact on our environment, our communities, and our world at large. So what is 3D printing? Well, I've, many of you have probably already heard of 3D printing. It's rapidly made its way into popular culture. And in short, 3D printing is a way where we can take a physical, digital representation of an object, a digital representation of an object, and turn it into a physical object. And this is a 3D printer. It's an example of a consumer 3D printer that you can buy in your Staples or in your local office supply store. And on it, you can see a, um, a, an object that was actually printed off of this printer. But one thing you might not know is that 3D printing has actually been around for 30 years. It was invented in the early 80s by a man named Chuck Hull, and he invented it and sold his first 3D printer to the automotive industry for use in rapid prototyping. And this is actually the very first 3D printer that was ever invented. It's very vastly different than um, the ones that you'll see today. We have this in our, in our office in Rock Hill. I think it's, it's awesome. But when this technology first came about, we didn't even realize the power of this innovation and what, what we would eventually do with it. And now, today, 30 years later, not only are we doing rapid prototyping, but we're also mass manufacturing. Hundreds of thousands of items a day, things like dental implants and hearing aids. We are printing in hundreds of materials, anywhere from sugar, which we've just recently started printing in, to metal, to ceramic, to gold, to everything in between. We're printing very, very small, as small as a uh, thumbnail, to incredibly large. This is a stator for a hydroelectric dam in Siberia. It's over 10 feet in diameter, and it's 3D printed. And we are also 3D printing in space. There is a group called Made in Space um, that, is, that is figuring out how to 3D print in space and manufacture in space stations in the International Space Station. So this is not just a evolutionary manufacturing process. It's a revolutionary one. And there are three things that make it really exciting. The first is, is that with 3D printing, the correlation between cost and complexity is very, very low, which means you can make something that's complex and customized for a fraction of the cost that you could do so with traditional manufacturing. The second is that it is incredibly fast. You literally can design something on your computer and print it out and have a business going in a day. Because all you have to do is have it printed and get it up online and, and sell it. The third is that it allows for rapid iteration. And many of you, if you're entrepreneurs or part of the entrepreneurial community, have heard of this idea of fail fast, fail forward, or the lean startup. With 3D printing, you can design something, print it out, prototype it, try it, and try it again, and figure out a product in a matter of um, months, excuse me, in a matter of days that normally would have taken a matter of months. So what I'm really interested in is how can we use this new technology to solve problems and make a positive impact on the world? If you could make anything, irrespective of complexity, what would you make? Well, GE, General Electric, thought of this question, and the answer that they came up with was jet engines. And they found that just by using 3D printing to redesign the small component parts in a jet engine, that they could see efficiencies in fuel consumption and hydrocarbon emissions. And they could do this in a way that you couldn't do with any other kind of manufacturing. You needed 3D printing to do this. And they saw an efficiency in result in 1% efficiency. Now, 1% seems like a very small number, and they're dealing with very small parts. But when you put it in context, it actually has enormous impact. That's thousands of 3D printed parts in thousands of jet engines 
in thousands of airplanes across dozens of airlines. And what that means is billions of dollars in savings and energy efficiency across the board. And that's just one industry. How can we take this technology and apply it across industries? And how can we find ways to have not just an incremental impact in energy conservation, but a powerful step change? So 3D printing is not just positively impacting the environment, it's also positively impacting individual lives. And it's doing so in meaningful, powerful, and often miraculous ways. And this brings me to the story of Amanda Boxtel. And this story is actually, it's, it's incredibly moving, it's quite tragic, um, but it's also simultaneously really inspirational. So Amanda was skiing in Aspen, and she had a freak skiing accident, and it left her paralyzed from the waist down. And doctors told her that she would never walk again. But those doctors radically underestimated two important things. The first was the, the spirit and the heart and the passion and the courage of Amanda. And the second was technology, specifically 3D printing technology and 3D scanning technology. 3D scanning technology, which allows you to scan a human form like Amanda's body, and 3D printing, which allows you to then print out what you've scanned. And so a team got together, and they scanned Amanda's body. They scanned the contours of her back, her, sh her shins, and her thighs, and her spine. And they designed and printed an exoskeleton. They had, ac they had actuators and they mechanicals, and they made it move. And they created the first ever um, bespoke suit. So it's a 3D printed robotic exoskeleton, which is what you see here. And when Amanda put it on, it allows her to walk, to stand tall, and to walk. And I just think that that is such an incredible, powerful application of this technology. And that's just one application. What other lives can we impact? What else can we create? So we've talked a little bit about what large corporations and professional 3D printer machines are doing. But what I'm really curious about is you. How can you use this technology? When you have access, if you, can, if you have access, since you have access, how can you use this technology? And many of you do in maker spaces, in 3D printing clubs, in design and engineering classes. What can you do? So to inspire this question, I wanted to introduce you to just a few change makers that I've had the incredible um, um, happiness to, to be able to, to work with over the past few months. And the first one is um, CityX. So CityX is change makers in education. And they asked the question, how can we use 3D printing to change education? And they came up with this idea of introducing kids as young as eight years old with things like haptic tools, 3D scanners, and 3D printers. And they introduced them to this idea of a fictional city X where settlers on another planet had to solve problems. And these kids are now inventing, designing, and prototyping solutions to problems. And they're learning that the world can change, that the world needs to change, and that they can be the ones to change it. And this is just, um, an example of something that they, they've made. Cute girl. And the next one is Midas Touch, which is out of Harvard University. And they ask the question, how can we change art? How can we use 3D printing to change art? Specifically, art for um, visually impaired and for the blind. And so art is something that, you know, especially paintings, if you are visually impaired, you can't really experience a painting. They figured out a way to use 3D printing to make tactile representations of art so that people could experience it. The next one is Project Egg, this man named Michael van der Klee. And he, he told me if I was going to say his name on stage that I should just say Michael. But um, I, I'm attempting Michael. Um, so he was really interested in how 3D printing could take a look at um, architecture and design. He was specifically interested in furniture design, but also architecture. He was inspired by um, nature. And this is an example of a piece of coral. He thought, how could we use 3D printing to reconceptualize how we, how, we, how we build architecture? And he thought, what if I was standing in something that looked like this? And he conceptualized this idea. Um, and this was to be 3D printed, but he realized that it was too big to 3D print. So he decided to use software technology to break it down into something like 4,570 stones, individual stones that you can actually 3D print 
yourself at home. Um, so if you want to get involved with Michael's project, it's actually a community collaboration project. It's global community collaboration. You can download a stone, you can print it out in your home computer, and you can send it to Michael, and it will actually be part of a piece of architecture that's traveling around the globe. Finally, uh, along the lines of co-created um, 3D printing, is the story of Nate, who was asking the question, how can we change our community? And Nate realized that in his community there was no community recycling, and also that there was a subculture of these individuals called canners, who were going around collecting cans from the garbage to make a living. So he wanted to both support his community and support these canners, and he created 3D printed recycled um, hubs for recycling. And he created th these 3D printed hubs. I said, why did you use 3D printing? And he, there were three reasons. One is because he said it's very cool and everybody wants to be involved with it. The second is because he was able to rapidly prototype different designs to see which ones worked. And you'll see there, those are two different designs. And the third is that he now has a, a, the possibility to both scale and replicate his idea, which means that if right now you want these community recycling hubs on your campus, in your companies, on your street, you can go online, you can download the file, you can print it out, and you can put it up in your community. And so that's what I want to leave you with. So we've talked a little bit about how corporations, entrepreneurs, and individuals have been using this technology to make a positive impact in the world. But what I'm really interested in is you. How can you use this technology? How can you access 21st century skills and, and tools like 3D printing, 3D scanning, and 3D software? What problems can you solve and what opportunities to, can you create? How can you move from not just being a consumer of things to a maker of things? What will you make? And how will you be a change maker? Thank you.